everyone, welcome to the Community Classroom. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator. There was a request to estimate the percentage of Moors that migrated from the East to mainland America in earlier times. It's not possible to actually make a good estimate of that, but we are going to do something a little different. Uh, during the 1400s, many people may not be aware of this, but there were major expulsion edicts for both Jews and Muslims to expel them from Europe. And this was going on for quite a while, actually. Many of them fled and many were deported, but many actually remained and converted, at least on the surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the passenger and immigration list to see if there are any indications of Moorish identity based upon surname. And these surnames would indicate uh, darkness or swarthiness in terms of uh, phenotype and ethnicity. And what you're going to see is that a substantial number of individuals actually remained uh, after the expulsion edicts, but many of them migrated out of Europe well into the colonial periods. And so we're going to look at surnames that indicate things like Moor or Moorish or Negro in terms of ethnicity. Now there will be some direct correlations where, where you'll see the name directly, but again, sometimes you'll see variants of those names. And it will be based upon coming from different European languages. Languages. Now remember that a phenotype can be erased in just two generations in terms of a family. And so the phenotype should not be the main indicator in terms of uh, that ethnicity, that underlying ethnicity and heritage. As always, if this video appears on anything other than Dr. Tracy McCarthy, it is stolen and unauthorized. Let's get started. To get started, we're going to look at some of the common understandings of some of the surnames that we're going to see. A common understanding of the name Moor is often that it's related to North African Berbers. Uh, there's also the understanding that it uh, comes from individuals coming from Mauritania. It also sometimes means simply dark or swarthy or black. Now, as you can see, uh, this name was also applied to Arabic conquerors of Spain and individuals who were considered dark in Europe were often given the name either Moor or Negro. And this was taken on also as a surname as many surnames came about that way. And so surnames often were uh, descriptors, you know, physical descriptors, or sometimes they were related to occupation, but often they were descriptors. And so you can see there are uh, um, uh, you can see a number of variations here. So you can see in the Dutch, M-O-O-R, in the German, M-O-H-R, in the Danish, M-A-U-R-E-R, -E Spanish, M-O-R-O. -O. And so you can see that there are a number of variations so that when we go through the list, you can identify some of these. And here we have some additional variants. You can see this with the name Maurice. And so you can see that meaning of the name Maurice is dark skinned Moorish. Maurice is a version of Maurice, Latin, and a derivative of Morris. And so you can also see a number of uh, variants down here. You can see Morris, Maurice, Moriz, Maurice, Morris, Maurice. You can see Mo, Mori, Morix, Morino, Moritz. Morill, so you can see there's quite a variety here. Now, this is a German surname that many people may not even think about in terms of relating to phenotype, but this particular name, Braun, actually means brown, and so that's another variation that serves as an indicator in terms of brown phenotype. Now, we're only going to look at a few pages in terms of the passenger and immigration list because the number of individuals who have surnames that would indicate darkness or 
uh, what you consider a Moorish identity or Negro identity, brown identity, uh, in terms of phenotype, the numbers are staggering in terms of the uh, listings on the passenger and immigration list. And so we're just going to do a few, um, but what you can see here is you start off with a lot of these names that have black in them. Now there is an entire list of uh, just the surname black. Now some people are going to say, but it doesn't it mean something else sometimes? Doesn't it sometimes mean the opposite? Uh, that is possible, but uh, in many instances it means exactly what you think it means. And so here we have off to the left down at the bottom, you have black man. And so that's the last name, Blackman. And you can see this name. This is a good list because you can actually see where the name first appears. And so you can see uh, this first individual popped up 1820. But then you can see that uh, Adam Blackman and you see Brian Blackman uh, actually immigrated much earlier. So you have 1620, 1650, then you have a 1679. And what's interesting is when you see Brian Blackman immigrated with servants. And you can see additional listings for black men and you see uh, what appears to be Elizabeth and you can see the dates and you can see these individuals came very early and a significant number went into Virginia. So again, you see 1648, you see 1635, 35, 35. Uh, you see one person going into Massachusetts. You see uh, 1620, 1650 appearances. Uh, you go down, you see some went into Barbados. Uh, you see going into San Francisco, and that's later on, 1851. Uh, but these earlier times, they are pretty much going into uh, the Virginia area. You see one going into Mississippi, 1820, New Orleans, 1820, uh, Mississippi, you see New Orleans again, New York. Uh, you also might notice again, you see this Thomas Blackman uh, went to Barbados with servants. And what you see on this list, again, over to the left, uh, start up at the top there, you see uh, black men again. So we've got the New Orleans one and the New York. But then you start to see Philadelphia again, 1860 here. And then you start to see black more. OK, so very specifically here. So you see David going into Boston, Edmund, just America. Uh, and these are in the 1700s. And so uh, you see a significant number uh, coming in the 1700s going to Jamaica. You have uh, San Francisco, 1850 again. And then you have America, 1760, Maryland, Maryland, America, Boston, Philadelphia. And now we're going to look at a list of individuals with the surname Braun. Now there is an entire list with just Brown, the straight Brown name, uh, but we're going to look at a variation here. And remember, this is the German variation. And so you can see a uh, list of individuals. For the most part, they were going into the Philadelphia area and the majority of them were immigrating uh, either through deportation or uh, other reasons um, in the 1700s. And so you can see going into Philadelphia, 1753, 1753, 1753, 1749, on down, and you come over to the next list again, more of those same dates in 1738. This is just heavy traffic during the 1700s here. And you also see uh, Braun, and you see over to the right, there is one John Braun with a large family, and that individual was migrating either to England and or America, and that's 1709 also. And so one thing people might want to do if they're doing research on this is to look and see what was going on historically in Germany during this time. Uh, that might give you a little bit more insight into why people were migrating at that time and with these surnames.
And the list goes on with Braun surname. And you can see that it starts to expand a little bit. So you have the addition of Texas. Uh, when you get into the 1800s, you have another Texas. Uh, but for the most part, again, Philadelphia seems to be the primary place that individuals were going with this particular surname. And so again, you can look over, you see a little bit of New York over to the right. Uh, again, you see the England and or America. And again, the majority being Philadelphia. Again, you see a significant number in the 1700s, 1752, 1753. Uh, seem, those dates seem to be pretty popular in terms of this list. And more individuals with the surname Braun. As you can see, this continues to be related to Philadelphia. So significant travel to Philadelphia. Now, one thing you might notice is you might see a husband with the list and the children and the wife. And then you might see the wife with the husband and the children on the list. And so you might see uh, sort of cross-referencing going on. And on this list, we see variations of the surname Negro. So you see the surname Negro going into New Orleans, 1779. You see Negron, so you see a variation of that. Uh, again, going into New Orleans, 1779. You see Negron, New Orleans. And so New Orleans seems to be a popular destination for this particular surname. And you can also see the cross-referencing going on here. Uh, as you go further down again but these are also occurring in the 1700s and we've looked at this before but you can also see Negus uh, down at the bottom uh, going into Philadelphia and here we have a continuation of names with the prefix of NEG and you can see a variation going into Philadelphia again, 1700s, 1747. Uh, you have an 1806, 1747, 1738, 1738. Uh, you go over to the right hand side again, more going into Philadelphia. And you have again a variety of spellings here. Uh, you even have Negra and uh, again Negro and down here at the bottom on the right you have Antony and Isabel and you might see their names in some other things and this is going into Virginia Now we're going to look directly at the name Moore, the surname Moore. Now many people are used to seeing Moore with an E at the end, but in terms of the immigration and passenger list, we have the direct name Moore. And so you can see again, 1700s here, 1763 going into Boston. So a significant number going into Boston. And then you also see going into Charlestown, Charleston, South Carolina, 1767. You see going into uh, just America. And you can see the names. You see Andrew, Ann, Anthony Moore, Antonio, Austin, Barbara, um, and you can see this is going into Philadelphia. Then you have uh, coming out uh, of Europe going into either England and or America that's 1709 uh, you have individuals again going into Charleston again England and or America with uh, family here and if you go over to the right hand side you see additional names now in the 1800s going into New York uh, versus Philadelphia so again but in the 1700s again so you have going into Boston Again, the Carolinas, uh, then you have going into Maryland. So 1774, you have individuals identified as more going into Maryland, South Carolina, a uh, large number going into South Carolina. And then you have Philadelphia, again, 1716, 1774, 1739. This is a significant number of people uh, coming out of Europe during the 1700s who are identified as a dark or swarthy or black or Negro or more based upon a surname alone.
And here the list continues. And again, these are only partial lists because the lists are much longer. Okay, so we have, again, we have David, Moore, Daniel, Donald, Edward, Elizabeth, George, Heinrich, Hans. Uh, so this is, this is quite a list. And so, again, you have individuals primarily coming out of Europe. You have 1600s going into New Jersey, 1700s, Boston, Virginia, uh, just America. Uh, you have Maryland, Charleston, San Francisco. Uh, you have quite a few here. And then if you go over to the right, and again, some of these will be cross-listed, so you might see them more than once, particularly if it's a husband and wife with a family or a parent and a child, you might see that uh, cross-listed. And also, these also include uh, listings for land records too. And so these passenger and immigration lists are wonderful in terms of tracking people down uh, and tracking down uh, where they've been and uh, all sorts of activities they've been involved in in terms of like land deals and things like that. Okay, so over to the right, you can see again going into Philadelphia, Maryland, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, you see Virginia again, Charleston, New Hampshire, Boston, uh, going on down again, uh, large percentage going in the 17 and 1600s. And again, even though this is an abbreviated list, we still have a substantial number of names indicating more uh, with this abbreviated listing here. And so again, you can see additional mores uh, coming into America. So you see more, you see Henrik or Heinrich or Henry, uh, Israel, Jacob, James, Jane, John, and you see them again, 1700s. And so you see going into Charleston, significant number going into Charleston. You have New Jersey, you have Boston, Philadelphia, Boston, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Charleston again. Over to the right, you see the variation. So then you start to see some of the M-O-O-R-E. And you see this name uh, going into New York, San Francisco area, and that's in the 1800s. But with the straight M-O-O-R, you can see there's a little bit of variation there. Uh, you go down a little bit further and you can see going into Philadelphia, Charleston again. Charleston is a popular destination apparently for this particular surname also. So again, 1700s, uh, there's a focus on the 1700s there. And here we can see some variants in terms of Moore and Moorish in a variety of languages here. So you see Morgan and Morgan, and you see more Grave, you see more Hart, more Heiser, Morrison, Morin, Murillo, Moritz, just like we saw in terms of the name variations before, uh, Morrison, significant number there. Again, you can see uh, these names came a little earlier though. So you can see a significant number of 1600s. And then you see some 1700s and you come over in the middle, you see 1700s starting off and then you see the 1800s going into everywhere from Plymouth to New Orleans to Philadelphia, uh, New York. And then over to the right with the Morris Sons, uh, you see significantly more going into like Philadelphia and New York, but again, and during the 1700s. So this is a really heavy period in terms of this migration. And we have additional variations on the name, surname Moore. You have Moore uh, going into Philadelphia, 1800s there. And with that spelling, M-O-R-H-E-R. -E then you have Maury, Maury uh, going into Philadelphia. That's 1700s again. Moore, Maury, Moria. And you have Morin. And in the middle there, going into New Orleans, Philadelphia area, a lot of 1800 ones uh, for that. And then you have a continuation of more, then you have more ring, and then more Morrison, more Sir, more Rith, more Ritz, more Ritty, uh, more Ritz again, just like we talked about there, and more set. And you can even see a French variation of more.
so Antoine uh, going into Louisiana and that's in the 1700s more set also going into Louisiana uh, with uh, you have more Rith going into Philadelphia 1751 so again a significant number going in 1700s and some going in the 1800s also And yes, the list goes on with these variants, and you have everything from Moriac to Morianne to Moriarty to, uh, if you get in the middle there, you see Morio and Morris and Morrissey, and then you get in the middle there and you actually see Morish. And so you, then you get into Morrison and then the Moritz. Uh, continuing on on that third row and so you see again you see 1700s 1800s here primarily and going into everywhere from Mississippi to New Orleans Providence Rhode Island Philadelphia you have New York Virginia uh, in the middle a significant number for Philadelphia and Virginia and Wilmington North Carolina you have Georgia uh, off to the right. You have San Francisco, Philadelphia, Texas uh, going on down. Significant number going into Philadelphia again. Again, significant number in the 1700s. Uh, you have a few in the middle in the 1600s. So going much earlier, you've got going into Virginia, the Moorish individuals you have going into Virginia, 1606, 1607 time frame. So those individuals would definitely be considered settlers. And yes, the list goes on. So we have in the 1800s primarily here, we have the Moriarty's and going into New York and Philadelphia area. Uh, we have John and James and Margaret and Martin and Matthew and Michael. And we have uh, the Maurice's. And so down at the bottom toward the uh, left hand side there, you start to see the Maurice's and they entered, you see 1654. So very early again, uh, you see Moriel in Virginia and Maryland, Louisiana, uh, going to just America for John. And then in the middle, you see the Morris sons. And so uh, Morris' son, when you see son at the end, it's usually that person's son. That's where those types of surnames come from. So then you have the 1700s again for the Morris sons. And uh, again, significant number coming in the 1700s. And see, uh, you can see them going into Georgia, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Georgia, New York, uh, again, Philadelphia, Boston, Georgia. Uh, then you have the Moritz. And the Moritz are primarily going into Philadelphia again 1700s 1800s then you get into some other variants and in, including Moreland now it's also important to note that more also relates to a place name and so there is some variation there And here we see another variation, which is the M-O-H-R. And so you see Hans and Heinrich and Henry and Jacob and Johan. And again, significant number going in. This is East Coast, a significant uh, percentage going into the East Coast. So you see Philadelphia, New York, uh, down at the bottom, you see Maryland. Uh, then you see more Philadelphia, New York. Um, and so a significant number in that eastern corridor. Uh, so you come over to the right hand side, you see again uh, more than you start to see more Feld and more Ring and more Mon. So there are uh, numbers you have going into Texas also later. So in the 1800s, uh, going into places like Texas. And the list continues on and you can see uh, going into Maryland again, Philadelphia area, New York, significant number, 1700s again. Uh, and you can come over and then on the right hand side, you get to see another variation, which is M-O-I-R. And those individuals were going into Maryland, Virginia area. 
Uh, and then you have into Philadelphia area, again, the 1700s. Interestingly, a number of these are arriving around the time of the revolution. So that's an interesting thing to note. And the list continues on here. And on this one, you can see toward the bottom, you start to see names like Joseph and Conrad and Nicholas, Paul, Peter, Philip uh, going into Philadelphia. And again, a significant number going in the 1700s. Now, when you come over to the right, uh, we have a different list that's related to the other list. And uh, this is related to the Negro list. And so you can see variants of that uh, down at the bottom. And you see Agatha and Angela and Anna. And back to the variants of Moore, we have Moreland, Morley, Morley, Morlton, Morley again, a significant number here, uh, many going into Philadelphia. Then you see going into also Jamaica, uh, significant number going into Virginia, and these are early. So you can see going into Virginia, 1607, uh, you see 1654. 1665 and so again individuals with those Moorish related names uh, going into Virginia area very early again indicating settler status and if you come over into the middle you also see Moreau so you see Moreau uh, going into New Orleans this is 1800s uh, going into Canada 1700s and then you see Moroli and Moran and Moroni uh, going into Philadelphia, 1800s time frame. And then you come over and you see Morass and Morast and Morat and another variation of Moore, which is M-O-R-R-E. And so a significant number going into Halifax. Uh, this is again the 1800s, late 1800s. And the list continues on and you have more uh, names with more Lee, more Roni, uh, more again with that spelling and Morel. You see a significant number again coming in in the 1700s and uh, you see some earlier ones too. So 1600, 1630, uh, Carol, Catherine Morley in Salem, Massachusetts. And you come in the middle and significant number going into Philadelphia for this. And then you see Morel and significant number for the 1800s and then the 1600s for the M-O-R-R-E. Even with the shorter listings, the list continues here. Uh, so you have Morley again, significant number going into Virginia very early. So you have going into Virginia with the Moorish type of name uh, in the 1600, 1653, 1654, 1636, 1639. You have Ralph, Robert, Simon, uh, what looks like Thomas. Then you have uh, individuals going into Philadelphia, but that's at a later period, and that's in the 1800s. Uh, in the middle, a uh, significant number going in the 1700s, and you have Moroni, uh, that name, and then you have Moror and Morassi and Morpeth. And if you come over to the right hand side, more Morels, and they are going into San Francisco area, Virginia very early. Uh, San Francisco, New York, and again, 1800s. You also see one going into Barbados and or Jamaica, 1600s. And the list goes on. And so you can see up at the top on the left-hand side, a significant number coming very early on. Again, these are settlers. And so you have 1635, 1635, uh, you have William Philip uh, going into uh, Philadelphia, going into Barbados, uh, Philadelphia again, and then in the 1800s. And then you have a few in the 1700s there. And an interesting variation of the name Morlock. Uh, for that, then you have Morlot and Morman and Morphe, Morphew, Mora. You have quite a variety here. 
and then back over to the uh, right hand side significant number going into San Francisco and New England in general and again settler status there so you have Moors and you have Edmund Edmund um, in the 1600s early 1600s there and as we wrap up the Moore and Moorish surnames we are wrapping up with Mora and Morney and Mornen uh, so we have a variety here, Moraine, Moran, again, Maurice and Maury. And you can see individuals coming in in the 1800s, going to Philadelphia, Philadelphia, Savannah, San Francisco, New Orleans, New Orleans, Philadelphia again, Philadelphia, also Maryland, uh, 1776. Then you have Moraine going into Barbados. Then you have... Uh, Moraine going into Virginia. These are again very early. So these individuals with more sounding names, uh, these individuals are settlers. And so then you have Andrew Moran, 1811, going into New York, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, uh, 1700s, 1800s. Uh, some again early settlers, 1635, 1635 with Maurice. Uh, again, you have uh, a number of individuals, Maurice, going in very early, uh, including going to Nevis. And then you have Virginia, Virginia. Again, this is settler status. And so what you see is that after the expulsion, a large number of individuals apparently remained in Europe that had those uh, ethnic identifier names and they migrated significantly later because we're talking about a century or two. And so they started migrating uh, significantly in the 16, 1700s and then into the 1800s. And if you notice, there were many individuals who uh, came at a time when they would be identified as settlers and colonizers. Hopefully this helped to answer the question related to the estimate, even though it's not an estimate. It gives a fair indication of the fact that there was a substantial number of individuals who would be identified as dark or swarthy or of an ethnicity that would be related to being either more or Moorish. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care and see you soon.